it's not aching, and we call it just a case of the old. It's just like, there's no reason that should be aching, it's just... Yeah, it's just... What's going on? Are we out of power? We got power. We're good? Oh, thank you. Cool. Uh, is, this, is this framing working? Is my... You look beautiful. I do look beautiful. I'm going to turn off the heater so that you can get some audio on this. <laughs> Should we take the Windex away out of the background there? Oh, this is only for audio, really. Oh, it is? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Because you'll get this transcribed. Oh. And then um, it'll become a blog. Okay. Nobody cares what Josh looks like. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Where's the blog at? Just click on blog on our website. On the, our Facebook thing? No, our, our website here, our internet website, trainingforwarrior.com. I didn't know we had a website. That's the, that's this day and age that we're in, right? I didn't know we had a okay, website. Okay, so we have a Facebook, we have Warrior Tracker, and a website. And people still don't know it's Kindness Month, and they still don't know what the... What okay, so what's the training... Here, for, what's the website? Training for Warriors Portland. Com. Well, people don't read their email. Like they also com. don't. For Warriors uh, they don't have Facebook. They can have Facebook. I don't blame them. You can have Facebook, yeah. but gotta, we got to communicate somehow. I'm like, I'm ready to. I thought that was what the Facebook thing was. As soon as I can, uh, on spam you in my Outlook app on my phone. Training for <laughs> Warriors Slack channel. Why did I not think of that? Can we do Slack? What? It's a it's a What's work chat. You know, you're here on your slide. You're here on slide. Yeah. You know what it is though. Really? Slack? I've, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is yet. It's just a um, it's like a productivity tool tool where team members can just talk to each other. Oh yeah, we use that. Our IT team uses it. Yeah. Oh, it's just a chat. Yeah. Oh, it's it's chat. But you have to pay a subscription <laughs> fee for Slack, right? I I hate that shit. I, I, I really, really do because that, it, like, it's so not as trackable as an email. Yeah. And then it just, like, stuff happens in there. Some people see stuff, some people don't. And then it's just. The conversation yeah, just goes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, you can do individual slacks, but it's like the texting thing. Yeah. Or you can be like Josh, just be a slacker. Is this recording? It is recording. Oh, cool. <laughs> everything. All of that. We're going to transcribe all that. Okay, good. Yeah. So, all right. First of all, thank you so much for coming to Train for Warriors for another awesome uh, injury clinic. We had shoulders a couple of weeks ago. We're doing um, hip and back health. Just to understand the theme of what we're doing, there's about five common areas of problems that most athletes have. And uh, the, the treatment is similar, and, uh, but it's not always the same. But it's similar enough to talk about these things together so we can like have like a, a new idea on how to take care of our bodies and prevent this stuff in the first place, and uh, and also uh, get a sense of empowerment that when you have these issues, you can recover from them uh, pretty well. So today we're talking about the hip and back specifically, hip and back, you know, the the butt, and we're going to talk about the low back. So everything basically between mid thigh to uh, where your ribs begin is what we're going to, uh, to discuss today. Um, we're going to talk about pain, what causes it, the, the function of the hip, and how it relates to the function of the low back, and we're going to go over a little bit of anatomy so you can see what is inside there and what can go wrong and what, what causes problems for people. Um, but uh, the, uh, uh, I, was, I was writing out like, what we're going to talk about, and I was like, one of the things I like to do is the three most common causes of pain, the three most, you know, uh, biggest, most common injuries or whatever. But with backs, it's interesting. Because <clears throat> you, you, you ask about what the most common cause of back pain is, and there are thousands of things. Like, back pain is something that has a lot of confounding factors, and um, the physiology of your injury doesn't necessitate the sensation that you feel in that, in that area. Um, what I'm saying is, is uh, there's been studies done, and this is one of was at Harvard Medical School, they were trying to figure out, um, like, trying to, to nail in symptoms of disc injuries. So they took people who had, uh, uh, a thousand people who had the same exact symptoms, and they, that were, con you know, concomitant with, like, what people perceive as disc derangement. And they x-rayed them, MRI'd them, and they tried to see like, if they could associate levels of pain 
with uh, damage to the discs in the low back. And after all their imaging was done, they found that a third of the people with traumatic levels of pain, like high, high, high levels of reported pain, had no injuries, no visible displacement at all. And then some people with the lowest amounts of pain had really traumatic uh, spinal injuries. And they were, they were like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, they, there was a low correlation to all of their stuff, so they weren't able to get any good data out of it. But what they did is, they said, well, I wonder, now that's a, pain, that's a population that's pathological. What if you did it with a healthy population? So they did their staff, and then they did the, uh, the faculty, and then they did all the people who were doing the research. So they imaged them, and they, and the, the, the spread of amount of injuries versus reported pain was the same. Like, most of the people didn't report a lot of pain. But some of them had pretty serious injuries. Uh, some of them had ruptured discs, pinched discs, uh, nerves, that were, you know, nerves in their sacral spine that were um, you know, being cut off. And it, it, it like kind of blew their minds that the physiology of the injury didn't necessarily correlate directly to the pain or the experience that, that people were having. So my point is, presence of pain doesn't necessarily uh, necessitate an orthopedic issue. It can, but we're going to talk about what's going on, how the hip and low back work, how to, and how to figure out what's not working inside of your hip and low back so that you can start to correct it and feel better, maybe reduce your pain? I don't know. It depends on what's generating it. But um, while we're talking about back issues, so because pain is hard to pin down, we'll talk about actually what is interrupting the function of the hip and low back the most. The three most common low back dysfunctions are lumbar disc derangement, which is it's pretty common. In fact, about a third of us, if you x-rayed us, will have, in this room, will have some disc problems. Um, and what a disc derangement just means is um, the, the, the spine is made up of a column of sort of irregularly shaped uh, bone discs or uh, you know, you know, columnar bone pieces that are hollow like that. Um, a spacer in between each uh, vertebrae or each bone, and the discs in between each vertebrae are supposed to act as a little bit of a cushion, and so you can move in, in different directions. Well, if you're if you continue to close one part of your uh, of, if you if you close the gap between the vertebrae on one side but not the other, it pushes the disc in one direction. So if you're moving, you know. A, you know, 360 degrees of range of motion and a really natural gait. Most of the time, nothing is really going on with the disc. But if you continually close just one end, so if you're continually forward leaning, or you're continually backward leaning, or using your hip or back in a certain way, the disc will work their way away from the center of their um, of, of the spine. When you push a disc away from the spine by a one whole millimeter, that's the beginning of a disc derangement. And so the, the level of derangement varies in how far that disc has been pushed outside of the vertebrae. So disc derangement is just relocation of your vertebral discs to some degree. There's bad derangements where you're pinching off a nerve and you have like a feeling of electricity in your body. And there's mild derangements where you kind of get stuck in a position and you have a little bit of irritation or pain. Um, or as often as often we often see, you're deranged but you don't have any mechanical problem. The disc is sl sliding out of the vertebrae but that actually doesn't impair the function. There's lots of things that create movement in the body. There's actually six force-bearing structures in the spine alone. So having a disc problem doesn't really mean that you're, it's the end, of the end of the game for you. But um, you, can, you can cause some serious problems if you impinge on nerve root. It's lumbar disc derangement. Um, so that's anything in the low back where you're flexing and bending in a way that creates a, a movement in any one of those discs. Uh, Sacroiliac joint hypermobility is the second most common source of dysfunction or pain in the low back. And the sacroiliac joint is that uh, junction of the, the sacral spine. So when your spine sits down in between, it rests against the innominate bones, which are the two hip bones that uh, house your legs. So there's, there, there's a joint in there, and it's not really supposed to move. It's a keystone joint. So uh, the, the bones just sort of sit against each other and they don't, they're, they're locked in place. And the more movement, 
that you have in that joint, the more pain and irritation that you have. So there's ligaments that hold the, that, uh, that closure in place, and for most of us, that's plenty. Those ligaments are tight and strong, and unless you get into some sort of a traumatic you know, injury or, or um, accident, those ligaments never stretch. Some people, we're all born with a, a, a certain amount of ligament laxity, and so the, the more lax those ligaments are naturally, the, the more likely that you're gonna have space, and the more friction, and the more movement you're gonna get in that, in that joint. And again, this is where your the sacral spine is sitting in, in, in between the two hip bones. So if you have pain in the low back, like really low back, like right above your butt, usually that's, um, that, that's the area of the uh, sacroiliac joint um, dysfunction. And that the fix for that is to reduce the, reduce the movement. Luckily, there's lots of muscles that cross the sacroiliac joint, so even if your ligaments are loose or lax, you can tighten up the glutes, you can tighten up the obliques, you can tighten up the quadratus laborum, which is a funny shaped muscle that goes across your low back and connects to the top of the hip. You can tighten up those muscles and they can create stability. You still have sacroiliac joint syndrome, but the muscles around it will make you asymptomatic so you can live your life happy and pain free. Um, and that's the second most common. And then they, the third thing is the thing that I find the most, and it has um, sort of the cloudiest effect on pain, um, which is just general dysfunction of the hip. So I used to call it general malaise, and we're going to go through some hip work here out on the floor when we're done with the lecture portion. We're going to identify what parts of the, of the hip in our bodies work well, what parts don't work so great, and um, how to restore the function. But uh, if the, anything that the hip is doing, the hip does in your daily life and movement, whatever the hip cannot do, the low back will do. And anything that the low back can't do, it's gonna borrow mobility and stability from the hip. So they affect each other dramatically. Um, our lumbar spine should be pretty stable, shouldn't be very mobile. But if it is mobile, the hip will lock up and create stability for it. And that's where you got hip and back problems. Where you have one, one part of the team isn't doing their job, and the, the other person, the other team member in this case, the, the hip and the back is gonna make up for it. And when you have a joint, do something it wasn't designed to do, that's where you're going to create lots of pain, weakness, and you know, constant irritation. And people say, like, I have a bad knee, I have a bad back, I have a bad hip. You have something that is doing a job it wasn't designed to do. That's why it's bad. It, just, it, shouldn't, it doesn't feel good to do that. It's not a long-term solution. But luckily, that's something we can affect. Because we can restore stability, we can restore function, and through the restoration of stability and function, we can get strength. And when, you're, when your joint complexes are strong and fully functional, and nobody's borrowing or doing the job of another, of another system or joint process, then I'm not saying you're going to be pain free, but man, you're, you're going to be, feel so much better to move. It's going to be so much easier to do the exercises and the things you like to do, whether it's riding your bike, climbing up the stairs. You're going to be so much happier in your body. Um, and hopefully through movement, um, that pain will be reduced. I just took 12 weeks of anatomy and physiology and jammed it down your throat in 10 minutes. So, <laughs> that was a lot of stuff. Um, we covered a little bit about function of the hip, low back, a little tiny bit of anatomy. I'm gonna get into a little bit more, but I know we're sitting down and it's hard to, um, it's hard to think and visualize that stuff, so we're gonna move through some things. Um, but right now, we, we talk about hip and low backs. Does anybody have any questions? about um, anything we've covered so far, anything that we ha I haven't covered that you might be interested in learning about before we move and do stuff. Okay, let's, who here has, I should ask this question again, who here has low back pain or uh, a hip problem or any sort of dysfunction? Constantly or not? Constantly <laughs> or not, <laughs> right? Everyone sometimes, yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, so then you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's, it's something that I, I had low back pain my whole life, right? So when I was uh, 13 is when I noticed it, coming every day and not leaving. And uh, I was hitting puberty and I was growing and like, I was like, oh my, my back hurts. And my mom was like, yeah, you know, you're growing, your bones are gonna hurt. And all of the adults in my life complained about back pain constantly. So I was like, oh, I'm an adult now. 
He's like, this is like what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Like at 13 or whatever. And so um, I would remember though, I would be in so much irritation. Like I'd be at my friend's house and I'd just be up against the wall, just stretching, trying to get some relief to like get so the pressure off my hips. Like I was just so tight in the weird areas and I was trying to figure out why. And I was taking a class at the Czech Institute uh, about 10 years ago, and it was something that my friend told me to do, and it was a good, uh, there was good coursework there, so I was really interested in fitness, and so I get in there. I had no idea what it was. It was a spinal pathology class. I was like, cool, this is interesting. I don't know what we're gonna do with that, but so we did some evaluations, we did all this stuff, and we're flipping through these syndromes, and then the description of the, 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 the symptoms was exactly what I had felt for 10 years, or at that time, 14 years by then. And I was like, I was like, Oh shit, that's what I had, it was that cyclone syndrome. And, uh, and like I, I read about it, and they're like, oh, keystone joint, all the stuff I just said. And they're like, yeah, all you gotta do is strengthen the muscles. And it's like, just do these four things. And it was like planks and glue bridges and just do some basic stuff. And I was like, that's so simple. That's not gonna work for me. And I did it, and like two to three weeks into it, cleared up, has felt better ever since. As long as I'm moving and training and stuff, it's good. But doctors don't know this shit. Like they like, Everyone has a, some sort of a problem. It's like, yeah, just do some planks. You're good. You're fine. Like, okay, go ahead. What if you have, like, I've almost never had lower back pain, nice. but I almost always have upper back pain, like, between the shoulder blades. Okay. And I've seen doctors, been to the ER, and can't find anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, would, oh, I guess I would ask, when you, when you went to the ER, what kind of diagnosis did you they were idiots. It was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that is they did a the CAT scan, chest, chest x-ray, blew out two veins. It was... It's a nightmare. Yeah, they didn't listen to me. I ended up going home saying, take ibuprofen. But it was... It just killed me. They couldn't figure it out. I, like, they found nothing between the CAT scan. They thought maybe heart attack. Because, you know, so they did chest x-ray, checked all this stuff. and. Hmm. Well, I mean, like, A, diagnostics don't sound super, like, on point. Um, and B, even if they like find an abnormality, like most most physicians don't have the kind of orthopedic knowledge. That's why they send you to a, a physio or a, a physiologist or a surgeon who is actually in there looking at like, bones and muscles all day. Because if they're not, not talking to a specialist, they're probably not going to understand what that means. Like, but can any of this maybe? Oh yeah. Up so your spine, to, to your point. So to your point. Um, the upper back and how it relates to the lower back. Remember how I said like if your if your low back is trying to do something and it can't, the hip's gonna do it for it? Same thing applies up the chain. Mm -hmm. So the, the there's a, a theory called alternating joint theory. So a, a mobile joint that can move in 360 degrees is usually but you know uh, down the chain from a joint that only does one thing. Right? So this is a stable joint, this is a mobile joint, this is a highly uh, mobile joint and the scapula thoracic is a stable joint. So most of the time it holds true. It's not a perfect theory, but um, the thoracic, uh, the thoracic spine. So he's talking about the upper back. That's everything that has ribs on it. So it's from the, the to the neck to the low back. It's designed to be pretty darn mobile. It, ha it should have about 30 to 40 degrees of flexion and extension. And you should be able to rotate, each of those vertebrae should be able to rotate eight to 12 degrees. That's a lot of rotation. That's a lot of rotation for a creature like us. So it's a very mobile set of joints. So oftentimes what has happened is those, those vertebrae have compressed and have gotten really stiff and they've lost all that mobility. So all that function that they used to have is no longer there. The consequences of that are, you got you know, tissue that atrophies because it's not getting, uh, uh, like the lymph fluid's not getting pumped out because that movement's not there anymore. So like, just by having a lack of movement, you're gonna have some mechanical problems to appear because of that. And like, once you restore the function of the movement, I don't know, like, you could have slipped thoracic discs, just like you have lumbar discs, you have thoracic discs, you could slip those too. But um, there's a lot going on. And like, you gotta, you gotta restore your function to the T-spine just like you do to the hip and the low back. Some of the stuff, Dave, that we do in class where we make you open up and stretch, some of that is that, that work, but there's a lot of things that are specific to the T-spine um, that, you, that you have to do. You should come to our neck and, our neck and shoulder training. <laughs> That's, uh, I assume because it was back. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, I got you. But don't worry, we're going to talk about it today when we get moving. That's a good question. Um, to answer it, lots of things. Go ahead. Well, 
even when uh, my thoracic, when we worked with my, well, my neck and shoulders, my shoulders were getting injured, it was a thoracic spine that you had me mobilized. So I guess Dave, to your point, or to your question perhaps, working with neck and shoulder stuff, the thoracic spine affects it, and therefore the low, the, the lumbar spine would affect it too, if it's, yeah, again, not mo or, yeah, too mobile or... Hy Hypo-mobile or hypermobile. Mm -hmm. Or lack of using it for a long time and having tight muscles. We're just gonna we're just gonna have a Dinah jump up and down on your back. Oh no, <laughs> she hasn't quite done that yet. That will be how, <laughs> that will be how we know. Uh, so we're going to um, do a couple of like simple assessments for your own back and your own hip health. So we're gonna we're gonna get moving here. This is the movement part of it. We're gonna do some um, simple assessments to figure out where you're at with some of these basic syndromes. We're gonna do uh, the, the prophylactic to that. We're gonna be doing the movement patterns that restore function to the hip and the low back. So we're going to kind of assess ourselves. We're gonna move through some prehab rehab drills. And along the way, we're gonna find things that our hips don't do very well and our hips do do really well. That's good. We wanna figure out what we, have, um, uh, what we have going for us and what we need to work on. Um, and so we're gonna, we're going to warm up, we're going to assess, um, we're going to do a little bit of training, and um, we'll have check-ins along the way that you can ask questions about uh, anything that you're feeling or thinking in terms of your own personal body. The idea is I want you to find some things uh, uh, or learn a little bit more about your own body and what it can and can't do and what you think it needs so that you can start to work on these things at home. The, the answers are simple. Figuring out the actual question to ask, that's the hard part, but we're going to be doing that today. Movement. So, if you're if you can uh, help me move the benches to the side, we're gonna get some mats out. 